So, in the past video, we have answered this one short problem. And here are our solutions. And also, in the previous video, we talked about the three steps in answering short and long problems, if you can still remember. So, these are those. Now, in this video, we're going to answer the remaining two short problems. But before we start, please see the previous episodes. Their links are on the description below. But if you're updated with the episodes of this current series, then let's begin. So let's go to question number two. So question number two is, you can invest 1,000 now, and that will pay you 263.80 for five years. So the compound annual interest rate implied by this arrangement is closest to letter A, 8%, letter B, 9%, letter C, 10%, and letter D, 11%. So based on the three steps that I mentioned in the previous video, so, step one is let's start reading the final requirement, which is this one. The compound annual interest rate implied by this arrangement is closest to. So, even if you don't read the whole situation or narrative yet, you will already have an idea that you might do an interpolation later. Okay? So, let's have the step two. So, that's the step one, so let's have the step two and interpret this and understand the problem. So, it is said here that you can invest 1,000 now. So, that's actually the present value already. And that investment will pay you 263.84 five years. So, it's just like this for five years. Now, 263.80 for five years or 263.80 times 5 years is more than the 1,000 investment. So what does it mean? It means the investment has grown. So the question is, what is the growth rate or interest rate? So that's step 2. Again, the interest rate is unknown. Okay? So step 3. Let's solve. Okay? Again, Future amount or payments times present value factor equals the present value amount. Now, the future payments is 263.80. And since it will be received multiple times at the end of each year, then we will use the ordinary annuity formula, which is 1 minus 1 plus i raised to the power of negative 5 over i. And the i is unknown equals the present value of the investment, which is 1,000. It's already given in the problem. And actually, this plotting here is actually the merging of what you know about the time value of money and what you understand about the problem. So, now, let's actually solve. Now, guys, if the problem is getting the interest rate and there are choices, then you don't need to interpolate anymore. What you need to do is just substitute the percentages and see if you will get the given present value here, which is 1,000. Like, if we try 8%, we will get 1,053. So, 8% is not actually the rate that we are looking for. And again, we're looking for a rate that will get 1,000. So, applying what we have learned, we need to lower the 1,053 to 1,000. So, in conclusion, we need to try a higher rate. Okay? Because again, the rate and the present value amounts are inversely proportional or opposite. So, meaning, after solving for 8%, you will already know that lower rates like 7%, 6%, 5% can't be the answers. And if they are in the multiple choices, then you can crush them out because they are not the answers. Because if you are going to use the lower rates, then the amount or the present value amount will become higher than 1,053, which is very, very far from what we're looking for, which is the rate for the 1,000. Okay? So, if I am to try and pick... I will pick first for the trial and error, the middle of the choices. 
like this 9% or 10%. Because if I got one of them, the present value of one of them, then I can already crash out the lower or higher rates depending on the result. Like for example, if I tried to pick 9% first and as if I did not pick first the 8%, we will get 1,026, which is higher than the targeted 1,000. And right then, I will conclude that I need higher rates than 9% to lower the amount to 1,000. Now, if I did that, then I can crush the 8% out as one of the possible answers, even if I did not yet tried it in the equation or in this, uh, in this equation. So, I hope you still follow. So, moving forward, if I choose 11%, we will get 975. So, 11% is too much. So, let's have the 10%, okay? So, if we use that rate, then we are going to get 1,000 present value already. So, 10% is our answer. Now, before we proceed, one thing is highlighted here. And that is, when solving time value of money problems, you should have filled this formula, this present value of amounts or present value of payments times present value factor equals the present value with the given information in the problem first before you can solve it to successfully get the answer. So filling up of this should be your goal first before solving. Okay, so that's question number two and its solution. So the third question is up next. So now, let's have the third question. So if the interest rate on the loan is 1% per month, the effective annual interest rate is, letter A, 12%, letter B, 12.36%, Letter C, 12.68%, and letter D, 12.84%. So that's already the step one because there is only one sentence. Now, let's understand this, which is the step two. It's simple, right? So it said here that if the interest rate is 1% per month, and this grows also by 1% each period along with the principal, then what will it be after a year or after 12 months? So, it's something like this. So, if this is 1 here, at the beginning of the first month, this will grow by 1%. So, it will be multiplied by 1.01. And it will become 1.01. Plus another 1%, then it will become 2.01 at the end of the first month. And multiply it again by 1.01 and add 1 again like this until you get to the end of the 12th month, then you will get the annual rate already. So that's the understanding and that's the step two. And at the same time, it's also the long solution to answer the problem. And again, I don't recommend that because it's time consuming because you need to put a timeline for 12 months. That's time consuming actually guys. Now. Since we already understood that the amount given, which is 1%, grows as time passes by, then we need to use the future value concepts that we learned in the past. So we cannot use the present value because again, present value is only used when an amount in the problem becomes lesser and lesser until it becomes zero, just like payables and receivables. So if you have not remembered I'll let you remember, the balances of those receivables and payables will actually decrease because of payments as time passes by, right? So again, we cannot use the present value here. Now, let's solve. I hope you did not forget about this. So present value amounts or present value payments times the future value factor equals the future value. So the present value amounts is already 1 or 1%. And since 1% is happening per month or it's happening multiple times, so we will use the future value ordinary annuity formula. 
So, if we have 1 plus i raised to the power of positive n as the, as the future value of 1, then to make it the future value ordinary annuity, we have to add two elements, the minus 1 here and the over i. So, in this problem, we have 1.01 .01 minus 1 divided by the interest of 0 0.01 again. And that will be 12.68 25030 times 1 and we will still have 12.6825030 which is this letter C. So it means to say that if you are to pay 1% per month and that 1% interest grows also with the principal then you are effectively paying 12.68% plus interest in a year. So, that's question number three and its solution. So, in the next episode, let's have a long comprehensive problem, which was also given to those who have seen my lecture videos, but unfortunately, most of them got it wrong. So, stay tuned. So, if you have learned, please click like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to be updated on my next videos. So, thank you for watching and see you on the next one.